All right, it's been a while, but we're back here. Wild CEO, Mitch was just hanging out. I don't know, it doesn't really work for us, but that's okay. We're basically reactivating the wild YouTube podcast. And we're gonna to talk today about a quick list, about uh, one, rewilding your life. That's what I need to reiterate of the foundation of our content at Wild. Um, what to expect coming forward from this and all the other things we're doing. We're inside the Rise Collective here. And then where we were for two years and where, why we stopped doing content and why I kind of stopped doing content. And now we're doing it again the right way. So why don't you intro yourself, Mitch, and make the wild audience really get to know you and feel warm and fuzzy, provide some value. <laughs> I'm Mitch, I'm the co-founder of Rise Brands, where we're sitting in right now, where we're gonna be doing all the content um, for Wild and the sister companies that we're super excited to introduce to you. Um, I come from the world content, I dove into the health world, I met Colin, and now we're just collaborating and- Shout out to Brian. Rewilding, Brian. shout out Brian, <laughs> and rewilding our not just our lives, hopefully your lives, and every brand we do too. And I guess we'll talk into what that really means. Awesome. So, so this is on the website. This is our Rewild Your Life guide. And I don't, I'm not going to go into each one, but if maybe one calls out to you and you want to ask about it, we'll riff on it a little bit. We're going to keep mm -hmm. this aimed, you know, 10 minutes and we're going to just get back to work. Yep. Okay, because it doesn't feel like work. It is, but it doesn't feel like it. Uh, first thing, food. Second thing, sleep. Movement. Nature. Barefoot. Grounding, earthing outside. Light. Right? A lot of fake lights on us right now are assaulted with all this blue light right now. Stress, toxins, community, and environment. These are the main principles that you can find if you go here and you actually read through. There's tips on how to improve it, why you should improve it, and why it's a principle, basically an ancestral tenet of health. And basically what we try to do at Wild is we try to get you to do as much of that as possible. Now, of course, you can buy some stuff, pop some pills. They're going to help you out. But if it's not based on the foundation of sleep, whole food, community, going outside, getting sunlight, then you know, it's, it's a Band-Aid, right? It's not gonna get you all the way there. In fact, the best way to do it is you get all that going and then you invest in your health even more to get to the next level, right? So for many of those, Mitch, do you wanna like, let's just pick one and we'll riff on it and then we'll, you know, they can read the rest here on the website and also we'll do future episodes and we'll kind of go through each one as, actually that's a good point. We'll, we'll do a, a show on each one of these in the future. But you just pick one and we'll just do a quick, quick riff. Well, I think the easiest one for people to get into is, is food. Okay. What do you think it's going to say in my guide of what they should do if, if food is one of the main principles of health? Get back to what we've always been eating food. Which I mean, is? Red meat, all sorts of meats from a natural source. It's not the new GMO, BS, corn soy fed. Fruits and veggies, again, all organic, all natural. What soil was it planted in? Where are they spraying on it? Are they Local, not on right. It? Yep. Local. Um, I think salt and miner minerals are a big part of that one. People mm -hmm. drink water, they yep. eat these foods, but they might not be mineralized. They might not have the right salt content. So what are you actually putting in your body? You're not just eating one thing or eating an apple or an apple. You know, they're two different things. So basically it's real food. Real Maybe food. Maybe I had to summarize it. Real food. And ideally small batch local real food. Because when it's not local or small, it's likely shipped from somewhere around the world and it's mass produced. And that is where you get the issues with like minerals, magnesium. Uh, you can actually look at some of the charts online. Maybe you can flash one up. Magnesium depletion in soil since like the 1920s. It's just like, it just goes like this. The point where like nobody has enough magnesium in their diet, wow. right? And the more industrialized the food is, the more, you know, corn, wheat, and soy, all the sub subsidized foods that are basically the foundation of the processed food revolution. Most of that food, which is the bulk of the standard American diet, is completely lacking in nutrition. You, you ever eat a bag of potato chips and you're like, I'm still hungry, but I ate so many calories. Yeah. Because what, what your body is, it is energy rich, lots of energy calories, but it's nutrient starved, mm. right? So, so you're, you, you want to eat more because your body's like, I need some iron. I need some magnesium. I need some manganese. Like, it's like, keep eating, keep feeding me because you're eating food that is so poor in nutrition that your body just signals to eat more of it, right? Wow. So that's one of the big problems with like, I mean, they call it, you know, uh, what is it? Em not empty calories? Is it empty calories is what, they, is what the phrase is? I don't know. I yeah, think. it's like empty calories, you know, all, all the tasty carb-based crap that is no nutrition. Yeah, you try to eat a half a steak, you're gonna be full. Yeah, <laughs> dude, or like even chicken breast. I, I, you give me one chicken breast, even if I wanted to eat two, I mean, I'm like, I'm like slogging through the bite. Yeah, you know. And then there's a lot of things about protein being prioritized, whatever. But yeah, so the biggest thing is eating real food, and that's also our sourcing methodology. At Wild is every single thing that we source is from whole food ingredients. Yeah. Real, natural, nothing synthetic, nothing fake, no sugars, no grains, etc. Okay. So there's a lot more in this list, but we're gonna just rapid fire through this. Um, we're going to tell you about what to expect coming forward from this channel and also our sister channel. Can you tell them a little bit about what we're doing at Rise? I think it's the same thing, the essence of like, where's the source of your food? Like, what are you putting in your body? It's the same thing for us and how we approach our business. Like, what are our intentions with business? We want to not just be honest 
But Candorous. Is Candorous a word? Candorous? It is It is a word. It's Candorous a word. is a word. It's a great um, word. Very transparent, documenting every step of the way and really combining personal growth with personal branding. Two amazing industries. So we want to rise the collective of all of our brands, all the people around us, and really bring what we've done online in-house. Because community is the most important thing. I mean, that's another pillar is just community. How do you remove stress? Improve your relationships. So. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the literal community is the, is the ninth... Oh, it's on there. It's sort of the ninth principle okay. of rewilding your health. Because if you're, you know, you have a bunch of money and, and, and you're, you know, quote unquote, healthy physically, if you don't have a social, you could say, relationship, like a social aspect of your life, yeah. you, you will actually die sooner, more prone to heart disease. Literally, every, it just makes everything worse, right? And when you have a strong community, you can deal with stress better. Like, disease is less likely. I mean, there's just so many it's things. the blue zones. That's what they call yeah. it. Yeah. Well, the longest, it's a big part of that's it. That's the common factor with the people who live the longest and they're the healthiest and happiest in the world. It's the relationships, the community they have. They have, they're, they're usually small communities and people yeah. kind of know each other and they help each other and they go outside a lot and they talk a lot. You know, you see like the examples of in Italy where you see, you know, old men kind of sitting outside a coffee shop and they'll just sit there for hours and just like lounge around, yeah. you know, and it's like, it's, that actually sounds amazing. <laughs> like, I wish I could do that, you know, <laughs> but they probably look at our culture and be like, those crazy Americans. Um, because we have actually lost so much of community in America. That's yeah. the irony. As you get richer, I've noticed this in my life. So what happens when you kind of go up the socioeconomic ladder? You tend to actually seclude yourself more from other people. Yeah. You know, I got to join some expensive country club so other people aren't there. You know, I got to spend more time alone or with my family or whatever. I don't have time to go to the coffee shop or hang out. I'm too busy. You know, we've self-isolated. And a lot of that actually tracks with the meaning crisis we have in our culture we talked about the other day. Yeah. which is like, we'll do a whole episode on that because community yeah. has a lot to do with the rise of a meaning crisis with our lack of community that's going like that. Yeah. Where can they follow us? On the, if rise they want to follow the Rise journey. So it's R-I-Z-E, R-I-Z-E rise, brands. Yep. brands on all platforms except for TikTok, it's rise.brands. Great. So what to expect uh, on the podcast, YouTube, wherever you're going to see this, uh, you can also check us out on wildfoods.co. You're probably going to already see this on the newsletter, and if you're not there, go and join. We're going to be putting out a lot more content. We're going to be doing cooking, food. We're going to be making all kinds of drink recipes. I'm going to show you how to make drinks out of pills, actually. A lot of people don't know how you can do that. We also are going to talk about our sister brand that we just bought. Uh, just joined the Wild Family. Standardized plant extracts. High-quality stuff with doses that match what they actually studied in research. So that's pretty cool. So where we went. So uh, this, is, this is a tough one. I, I, the journey of wild is... I haven't shared it a whole lot, but it's, you know, why not? Let's do it. Hey, it's Rise is Candorous, full transparency. Three years ago, right at the start of 2019, right before the, the thing, private equity group bought half the company. They bought 51%. What that 1% meant, though, was that I had no control over the bank account or the finances. We got to a point where we, had, we would have had a best seller that was just, like, not in stock, and you've got to buy more product, and they just ignored us. They just wanted to buy the product. Mm. Okay. The group had some financial issues. One guy apparently stole a million bucks and there was like all this stuff. And so we were a smaller brand. I mean, there was one brand doing like 20 million a year. And so we were a smaller brand. So what happened is like, they just, they didn't care. Like they're not going to spend money here when they need to have money for their main brand. And I get it. Like, it's not like, it's maybe some people's fault, but just collectively it was just a bad situation. And what happened is the sales for the company and some of you customers that have been with us the whole time. Thank you, by the way, you saw, um, lots of stock outs, a lot of shipping issues. Massive problems in the business to the point where our sales dropped about 80%. 80%. That's like near death. Like that's like every month you're like, oh, yeah. what are we going to be next month, you know? And I built this business, bootstrap <clears throat> myself from scratch out of my Austin uh, apartment. It took me about five years to get there. And I sold half the company because I thought we were going to actually grow, grow bigger and have a lot of resources and kind of the reverse happened. It got to the point where they had to sell the business back to me because they were just taking so much money out of the business that it looked like the business was just losing money. Nobody's going to buy that. Like, oh, hey, do you want to buy this business that's losing like $25,000 a month? Hey, investor, does that like sound good to you? It's like, no, no. <laughs> so what happened is they basically had to sell it to me. They sold it to me um, for, I got a really good deal, I would say. Um, but I still obviously had a lot of work to do. So I buy the business back, 100% control. In the next two years, I triple the business, like literally three times our revenue, you know? And then I got to a place where, again, I ran into the same problem, which was, you know, buying high quality ingredients, and scaling is very expensive. And so I just didn't have enough money to do it. I mean, we're talking like I might have needed a million dollars just to grow. And so I started looking for maybe an exit. And I actually wasn't even really looking for an exit. It was just kind of somebody sent me one of these emails like, hey, we'd love to buy your business. And I was like, ah, yeah, you're probably a scam, but you know, I'll take the phone call. And then we had a phone call. 
And I was kind of like, well, that's not really for sale because I have to fix the business. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't think anybody would give me a good price. I know what it's worth. I know what it did before. And then I remember one day, you know, that we had that phone call probably 60 days before. I kind of emailed, I, I emailed her again and I said, hey, you know, actually I would sell this business. And I was getting stressed because we had some financial stuff and I, I, like, I was running to the same problem I was running to before. And she's like, well, okay, you know, well, let's talk. Because I kind of threw out a big number as an anchor, which is a negotiation strategy, mind you. <laughs> and, and they started doing due diligence and looking and we started having conversations and like they were legit and they, you know, they liked me and I liked them and kind of one thing led to the next. And then eventually, you know, I sold the whole business. Um, and that was beginning of this year. Then they offered me to run it. And then they offered me some equity and a bigger vision and plan. And now we're, you know, we're in as a holding company, which we might rebrand a while, but we have Holco and we have resources uh, myself and a private investor, and that's how we bought our first brand. And so we're looking for high quality brands like that to add to our portfolio. And then the goal was to go bigger, do a kind of a roll up, and then maybe eventually do an IPO. So it's actually really exciting. It took 10 years to get to that point. I thought I might have like moved on and done something else, but I am now back here. But I'm back mm -hmm. here in a different way. I'm like, it's not all my money in life and my kids' life on the line. It's I have resources. I can hire great people, and I, you know, I can make investments like this that I could have only dreamed of when I was kind of all my money was on the line. In fact, I did multiple things like this. We had a warehouse in Austin. Mm -hmm. We were shipping. We had some studio stuff, and it just like I just couldn't get the momentum there. Like it didn't really pan out. And I think it was mostly because I didn't have enough money to hire good people. Yeah. You know, and now it's a completely different paradigm. And so I'm super excited. Um, we're talking to multiple brands right now to, to enter the family, and we're doing a big retail strategy slash play. And so we'll be sharing more about that. Um, so that's exciting. And yeah, we get a little pump out content every day. And so we have the studio here. We have a team here. We're, we're going to quadruple the team in the next kind of 60 days. And that's what you can expect. There's lots of content, new product launches, new, new brands that come into the portfolio. But the same mission is still there. It's to help people rewild their life. Get the principles of health and build your life. Take ownership of your health, your sovereignty, your mindset, and use high-quality products to help you do that. It was a little bit of a long one, but... Yeah, I mean, Austin moved out here once I sold. We're out now here in uh, Largo, Florida, which is basically North St. Pete. So Tampa, St. Pete, Largo. And we got some interesting stuff going on. I mean, we have a lot of interesting stuff going on, but this is kind of the main idea is, is we're going to build the inner team here. And then we have Rise Collective, the space. And so Rise is going to be a brand where we document everything we're doing, uh, like literally everything. Like when we hire people, when we fire people, struggles, you know, KPI sheets on how to make content, all the things we're going to learn the hard way doing it. Uh, we're going to document that for you on the Rise Brands platform. Yep. And then the inner platform is going to be just foods, recipes, other people coming in. We'll, we'll do a podcast over there, more long-form stuff when we have interviews. And this is just kind of a quick update video. Do you have any parting words? Any no. words of wisdom? No, get ready to rewild your life. It's coming. Check us out. If you're new here, wildfoods.co. We're also on Amazon. And a few call-outs. Whole animal baseline. Beef liver. We've got the bull blend. That's an organ blend. We've got the wild man. Wild Fish Oil, bestseller. Magnesium is newer, but has become a bestseller. And then we just launched a Methyl Multi, which is a whole food multi of methylated vitamins, means more bioavailable. I take it every day, because it's also got the methylcobalion, which is the non-synthetic form of B12. Most of the crap, like Centrum and stuff you find on the market, that B12, I, I forget the form of it, but it's a synthetic form. Yeah, you know? and the body doesn't absorb it as well, right? It does, like in some cases your body doesn't even, it just passes it through, you know? Mm. And so, game changer, love it. Uh, we've got a mushroom complex that's great for immune longevity, inflammation fighting, et cetera. And then we just launched a wild col uh, colostrum, which is a cocoa-flavored colostrum. Most colostrum is just plain, so we did one with a cocoa, and we're launching a, pl a plain to follow. And that's super awesome immune system, gut health, everything. Yep. Check it out. Amazing stuff. And we'll be sharing more and more and more as we go. Hope you follow along.